Good morning. Yes. Good morning. because the car isn't moving and we're just waiting on Devin to get out of here that way he can drop us off. She has a bottle. Oh, thank you. All right, so since it's so nice, we decided to have the girls out here on the blanket. Megan is working on her flower bed, and I am just sitting here with Veda. Look at that girl. Our deliveries were a lot different. How was your delivery with Hadley? I think I had a fairly good delivery with Hadley. Um, I can't complain. I self-labored at home mostly. We got to the hospital about 5 a.m. on March 6th and I was seven centimeters dilated. Um, I began pushing. I put 
so she's like 30 minutes and she was born. I Did you get that? Yeah, you got the epidural, right? How yeah. far? So you went to the hospital at, um, you were seven centimeters, right? Yes. And did you get it like right then when you got to the hospital? Yeah, because um, if I waited any longer, I wouldn't be able to because I'd be dilated. Right. So I'm pretty sure like seven or eight is the breaking point. So I'm shocked that I actually got it. Yeah. That would have been so crazy if you had to do but it without. I got it and they had to give me more because my... I can't remember if I was my left or my right side, but only one side of my body was numb. And I couldn't, and I could still feel my other side. So they were like against giving me more, but I like asked them and they gave me more. And it just made me really sleepy, which is why I get why they didn't want me to get more. Yeah, because like you didn't have the energy to push. I went in at like 9.45 to start pushing and she was born at like 10.13, so. That's not bad. It was a good, like, clean, like, delivery. I did have to get, like, some stitches, but I don't even remember how many. And honestly, I think that was, like, the worst part of, like, Was the, the stitches. Yeah. See, I, mean, I didn't feel her, like, that epidural, but I, right. I think it was starting to wear off or something, so I could feel, like, them stitching me up. Yeah. But, yeah, I can't complain. I'm very lucky, and if I had to have another one, that's exactly how I would want it to happen. Absolutely. I would say the same for us. Megan was in the room when I had Veda. It was her, Devin, and my mom. And then we also FaceTimed Devin's mom. And uh, yeah, they were... Had Ross. <laughs> just, just yeah. They were in the waiting room. So we FaceTimed them. For me, I had to get induced. So I was exactly 40 weeks pregnant and I had to go into the hospital and they gave me Cervidil to help my... Is she okay? They gave me Cervidil to help my body dilate because I was fully effaced but I wasn't dilating at all. So they gave me Cervidil and then the next morning they started me on a Pitocin drip. So that is when I really started having contractions and stuff. Is she eating the flower bed? I have it on my flower out of my flower pot and now it's falling apart and then my dogs are going to eat it and it's just not a good time. This is life. What's that? She's much happier now that she's in her walker. <laughs> I got Pitocin and I only made it to two centimeters dilation before I asked for the epidural and they put me on an epidural drip and the process was very smooth and then I pushed for about 40 minutes and then Veda was born. So it was really great. The only thing that's different I would say is that Megan did most of her labor at home and I had to be induced and then also I didn't tear at all. And I think that one of the reasons that I honestly didn't tear is because I was using um, evening primrose oil. And I was, this is like kind of graphic, but I was like depositing two a night. And I feel like that kind of helped everything like loosen up a little bit and kind of like prepped the area for birth. And Beta, <laughs> Beta was eight pounds and six ounces. And how big was Hadley Meg? So I have a big vagina. <laughs> How was your experience in the hospital with breastfeeding? Um, I think it was fairly well. I had, Hadley was kind of like a really alert baby. Like, I don't, honestly, I'm not kidding when I tell you this. I don't think she slept like the first 16 hours she was born. Like, oh my gosh. Oh, I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> She was born at like 10, 13, and by like 12, 30, we had visitors, and she literally stayed awake the whole time for that. And then like that night was torture for me because Ross, he is such a heavy sleeper, and so he would not wake up for nothing. And I like didn't want her to go to the nursery. <laughs> She's still crazy, if you can't tell. She's very alert, that's yes. for sure. Um, but... Did 
did it at the same hospital that we did. We both gave birth at Mary Rattan Hospital. And um, when you gave birth to Hadley, did they have like a separate nursery? Because I know when I went in, they didn't have a nursery. Yeah. They had, they had that whole room. Yeah. I was like, no, I got it. You know, I'm a mom. This is my baby. I know what my baby wants. And no, guys, it was terrible. I got, I was already on like 24 hours with no sleep when I went in to have her. And that just, is crazy. Yeah. So I bet I was like, 40 hours of no sleep. And then finally I was like, take her. Yeah. I was like, and yeah. it was great that Megan had a baby before I did because I took her advice on a lot of stuff. Like she told me, take advantage of the nurses. Like you're gonna be with your baby constantly after this. Like you're not gonna have somebody to just take her while you sleep and stuff like that. So I definitely took her advice and we had her with the nurses, you know, whenever we would sleep. And I think that I probably only slept for like two hours at a time the whole time we were in the hospital because I was nursing and they would bring her in. Veda was also very alert when she was born. She was an aggressive eater and she still is. Like she knew that she wanted to latch and she wanted to, um, you know, get some milk. So that was awesome for us. But one thing I will say is that a lot of people think that going into breastfeeding that they say like, oh, I'll try to do it. But for me, it was like, I'm going to do it. And if I personally didn't have that mindset, like I would have given up because it's very hard to get them to latch and to get the positioning right. I would say probably for like the first two weeks, right Meg? Yeah. Before it like goes smoothly. It like, it hurts. Like, I mean, obviously like this is not a, anything like touching your, you know, boobs like makes me cringe, but you definitely get used to it. I think like- And it's like a constant thing. So your nipples will get like chapped and dry. And it's almost like, I don't, my nipples never cracked or anything, but- I know some people that like really Yeah. I don't know, Hadley wasn't like an aggressive eater though, so. Vena was, and I knew that I wanted to breastfeed. So what I did for like two weeks before, I was due, I would scrub my nipples with a loofah in the shower. <laughs> yeah, because I had read that a good way to help with like your, like how you start breastfeeding, a good way to help with it is to like toughen up your nipple skin so that whenever, you know, your baby is nursing, your nipples are already kind of used to the intensity of it, I guess. I feel like if I definitely have another baby, I'm gonna go to Delaney because I feel like she's a research type of person and I just kinda like wing it. <laughs> well, I wing a lot of stuff too. Like I don't always research everything. And I knew that when I was pregnant that I would not have time to research stuff when I had a baby. Like <laughs> after Veda was born, for the first two months, I was just winging it. I was just doing, and then obviously like asking you and like mom for advice and things like that. So that's what I did. Um, I just tried to like learn as much as I could beforehand because I knew I'd be way too tired to go out and like seek the information on my own. What are you doing, babe? You're gonna have stuff all over. Is that funny? Look at all that. Apples and spinach everywhere. Was I think it's important to, first of all, before you do anything, as soon as you find out you're pregnant, go and meet all of the OB doctors, like your gynecologist, go and meet as many as you can. That way you find a comfortable person to talk to because it's not even just like the medical part, but for me, like Dr. Morton was really in touch with like checking in on my emotions about everything and kind of just like making sure that I was doing okay. And if I had any questions about anything, then he was like there for me and he was really into research too. So if I would look at like a new case study or something like that, like he would know exactly what I was talking about and we'd be able to like connect on that level. So that was really nice. and. 
I don't know, it's just important to be comfortable with somebody who's gonna be bringing your baby into the world. I think that's a huge factor, for sure. People are like, you don't know this about like delivery, but like you have your doctor and you're like, okay, my doctor's gonna be there. Like, it's okay. It. Yeah, it's all right. But like the doctor's gonna be there, you know, from the minute I start pushing, or like even the minute that I'm there, they're gonna be there, but they really don't even come in until like the baby is about to come out. Like, yeah, that's so true. You push with your nurses and whoever like you want to Like they take control and they like push until basically they can see like the baby's head. And they're like, okay, we're going to go get the doctor. Right. So that was like something that I like wasn't expecting. And like another thing is like, obviously I've never met you before. So you see a movie, it's like, oh my gosh, my water just broke. Like we have to go to the hospital. Like it's not like that. Like I had contractions and like my water never broke they had to break it for me yeah so i think like people, i like, was always looking for a sign that i was in labor and obviously i got induced so my water broke while i was in the hospital because i was on pitocin and it broke naturally i didn't have to have them break my water well i guess like as naturally as you could say but um i don't know how do they break your water megan honestly like it's such a blur i don't remember i think don't they take like a like a tool like a little, like and a hook thing or something. yeah, and they snag the bag and like pull it out? Yeah, but I was on the epidural. I'm pretty sure, so I don't know if I was just like so kind of like out of it that I don't even remember. But I just remember like the feeling of my water being broken, but I don't remember like it hurting or anything like when they did it. I don't really know. I just know. I was like, yep, there's no the water. Yeah, and it's really important to have a good connection with your nurses too, I would say. Yeah. Because like Megan said, they are with you from the beginning to end. Like even after you have your baby, you're probably going to have the same nurses because I know I did. Yeah. And if I didn't have, you know, good rapport with those nurses, it would have been awful. So I would say if you don't like one of your nurses, you need to let somebody know right away. <laughs> so that you don't get stuck with them for the whole, we were in the hospital for three days, I think, right? Yeah, that's what I was doing. Yeah, so you'll be stuck with them the whole time if you don't, you know, say something. And obviously you don't have to be like rude about it, but just be like, you know, maybe I would like somebody else. And another thing is the healing process. So doctors say that it takes six weeks for your body to heal. But I don't think that I felt back to normal until, I don't know. I still don't feel really back to normal. And Veda's five months old. But I would say like my body physically felt normal after three months. What about you? Yeah, I, I think, I don't know. I know I was like just super scared to like do anything. And, like, I have like a, like a, like a I agree and she had stitches like we said before so I think that would be a lot harder as in like sex and like even pooping or like anything that has anything to do below the waist is just really scary and traumatizing because the last memory that you have is a giant baby coming out of you <laughs> and then you know it's it's hard to think of sex or anything like that after you give birth so I would say just like take your time like you don't have to go and do it six weeks after if you don't feel comfortable it's definitely something that you should take your time with for me my biggest fear was pooping I was so scared that like I don't know I felt like if I pooped like something else would just come out of me <laughs> like, it just it's a weird it's a weird thing and it's really hard to explain Laxatives. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely get some laxatives. I heard that. Really? No. I heard that I needed laxatives before I even went into labor. 
So I stocked up on laxatives and oh my god. Oh <laughs> Millie my just god. jumped out the window. She just broke through my screen. <laughs> Get over here. This now. bitch. She's gonna be in trouble. No. Yes. The screen was right there and she just jumped right out of it. <laughs> uh, what are you doing, Hadley? <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Nope. Get over here. There's a bird, I know, but you can't run out in the street. Come on. Come back up here. Come on. <laughs> oh, I'm dying. Veda dropped her little popsicle, but she's content over there, so I'm just gonna let her be. Obviously, I'm gonna wash it off when we go back into the house, but what are you doing? Oh, oh my goodness. <laughs> Your mom is going to be so happy about this. Oh. Your dog is crazy. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you get the screen? Uh. Yay. <laughs> what's the baby doing? Hadley, what's the baby doing? Is there anything Hadley. else that you would... Just let it happen. Take your socks off. They're too far gone at this point. They're soaked. It's okay. It's okay. I think it's okay. Right? Okay. <laughs> Is there anything else that you want these people to know about postpartum? I don't think so. I'm still just flabbergasted about my dog. <laughs> All right, guys, that's gonna be the end of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, like my videos, and leave a comment below. Um, if you have any questions that we didn't touch on, I could possibly do another postpartum video that's more in detail. We're just kind of dealing with our crazy lives right now. So I'm sure that there are some things that we missed. But anyways, leave a like, leave a comment, subscribe, all the good stuff. And we will see you next time. Say bye, Hadley.